Hey, Clemens. Good morning. How's it going? It is going well. Good. I'm about to, after this meeting, I'm about to head back home to Germany, so. Yeah, I get to go home. Cool. This is a good day, yes. <laughs> All right. Hello, Eric. Good morning, Doug. Hello. It's going to be a challenge for me. I don't have my usual second monitor that puts these things off to the side, so. Oh, are you traveling too? Yeah, I'm actually at a Microsoft office in New York. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Let me go. Actually, let me do this. Let me share my screen. So let me do that eventually anyway. I need to figure out how to build, how to run this Travis build thing on my own machine. Um, actually, just run make. Oh, really? Yeah, there, 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 I think I'm pretty sure there's a make file in there. So if you just do make, you'll run all the same checks. Oh. Yes, I tried to make it as easy as possible. Magic. Yes. Yes, so I probably have to go and run this in Bash then. Uh, yes, it definitely is Bash. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> This is the magic of Windows services for Linux that I now have Ubuntu right in Windows, which is awesome. Yes, I had, for a very short period of time, I had a, uh, a very small little Windows laptop. And uh, one of the first things I did was to enable whatever it's called, I guess, you know, you have it with some Ubuntu service thingy, and started playing around with Ubuntu, and I was oh so excited. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, um, okay. I'll fix that later. <laughs> I'm not well, sure how to interpret that comment. Since, since I'm now using, since I'm now using this, this, the, the repo has been checked out on Windows, which has carriage return line feed at line endings. And if I'm now trying to use it from bash, then it starts, the, the tools start complaining. So I have to go fix it in a different way. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Huh. Uh, that's, that's one of the warts that's currently existing still with this with this Windows thing. Interesting. Uh, Vish Vishal, 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 Vishal? Yeah, I'm Vishal. Vishal, okay, thank you. Are, are you new to the group? I'm sorry, I don't recognize the name. Or have you been no, here? No, I'm running the first time. I've been planning to join for a few weeks, but uh, yeah, for the Excellent. first time. And which company are you from? Uh, I work for a company called InfraCloud. Uh, we are based in India. Uh, Cool. Can you do me a favor? Uh, can you, in the attendee list, or I'm sorry, in the agenda doc, which I'll paste into the chat right now in case you don't have it. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I put your name in there, but add your company name um, just so we can keep track of you. I okay. appreciate that. Uh, hi, Louis. Louis, you there? Oh, hello. Yep. All right. And Rachel, are you there? I am. Yep. And Joe Sherman? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. All right. There's a bit of background noise from somebody. I'm not quite sure who. Yeah, it might be me. Yeah, maybe you. Everybody else is on mute. So. <laughs> Sorry. Not a problem. Viom, are you there? Viom? Hey, this is Viom here. Oh, excellent, thank you. Actually, let me make this window smaller. Sarah, are you there too? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Darn it. Can't do that. I got halfway through the I don't know if you heard that. Sarah has to duck out halfway through the meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. I missed that. Thank you. David, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Cool. Thank you. Very good. How about you? All right. Laying around. I'm 
like most people. <laughs> All right. Uh, Varun, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Right. Morning. Morning. Jim Curtis, you there? Jim, are you there? Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> hey, Jim. Hi. Austin, how you doing? Austin, you there? Mr. Austin, you're on mute. Steve, are you there? I'm here. Excellent, thank you. Let's see, who else can I pick off? David. Thomas, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Cool, thank you. Austin, are you off mute yet? Klaus, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Cool, thank you. There's hey, Austin. Doug. I heard Austin you. Here. Yep. <laughs> Sorry about that. I cannot find my Zoom window. I've got too many tabs open. Not a problem. Uh, Ryan, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Excellent, thank you. Mark is on. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Doing good. Cool. And Mr. David Lyle. Present. Excellent, thank you. Baram, are you there? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Hmm. I think that's everybody so far. I keep seeing these email notices go flying by on my screen. Clemens, you're just too active right now. I apologize. We'll never do that again. <laughs> I just had to do make had to do two fixes in something that we're not going to talk about today. So yes, I understand. All right, are you there? I'm here. Okay, excellent, thank you. Is uh, Yaron with you? No, no, Yaron is giving a lecture. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, Ganesh, are you there? Ganesh? I don't think he's gonna be joining today, Doug. Oh, because I see him in the, in the chat. Oh, That's weird. Maybe he is. Yeah, just no, no microphone there. I don't know what that means, I guess they, they haven't registered the microphone yet with the, the software. That's kind of weird. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, it's on the list. We'll get a star if I hear from him later. They probably haven't dialed in yet, which is why no ma microphone. Ah, that could be it. Okay, we had another Dan show up. Is that Dan uh, uh, Rosanova? Parker. Ah, sorry. <laughs> so close. Um, let's see who else. Chris, are you there? Yeah, it's gone on. Hello. Hello. Ganesh, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Excellent, thank you. Um, okay, is there anybody on the call who I don't have in the attendee list? I think I might have everybody. Uh, hi, this is Josh. I just, uh, I just uh, joined it. And that, you said that's John Mitchell? Yeah. Good okay, morning. Morning. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here, Doug. I'm sorry. Matt's who's that? Matt's here. Oh, hey, Matt. Okay. Give me just a sec. Just. Uh, all right. All right. One last chance before we get started. Is there anybody on the call who's not in the attendee list? All right, cool. I think we have everybody. So I want to go ahead and get started. 
Um, but, but, but I don't think there's anything worth mentioning on the AIs, unless someone can think of something terribly exciting to mention there, other than just to remind people to take a look at their AIs. So yeah, I did my AI. So there's a PR on the process for highlighting code experiments. So that's just, Excellent. I don't know if you review it. It just came in this morning. Excellent. Thank you very much. I like crossing things off. Yeah, so take a look at 159. You guys get a chance. And Doug, uh, real quick on one of my AIs in there below, the one that you just crossed out. Mm -hmm. uh, find a way for companies to indicate what they're comfortable with people saying about their participation in the working group. Uh, how about we just ask, as we get close to Cloud Native Con in early May, um, you know, the meeting right before that, maybe we could just ask them on the call and see if they'd like to at least be in the presentation I'm going to give about this at Cloud Native Con. What do people think about that? That sounds fine. Yeah, actually, you could also just start an issue so that people could chime in if they're like, hey, here's some stuff. I mean, you should also ask at the call, but we could like pre-flight that a bit. If people are have stuff ready. Even better idea, Sarah. Thank you. I'm going to make the that issue would be right great. Now. Yeah, there might be some people who are like, don't announce it till such date, and then we'll do it at the call. But for mm -hmm. people who are ready, that'd be great. Perfect. I'll do that. Okay, cool. So you still can't excuse your, you still have an AI from that. You can't get rid of it yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yes. All right. Excellent. Thank you guys very much. Moving on then, let's talk a little bit more about KubeCon. So uh, just a reminder, we do have two meetings. We have BOF and the official face-to-face -face meeting with the times here listed in the agenda. I do have a doc for a list of proposed topics. I haven't taken a look at it recently, but I assume as we get closer to the date, we will try to finalize that list and put forward a, an agenda. Uh, Chris Anacek said that people who are not paying for the conference can get in, but they need to send them a note in advance to make sure that they can get an exception or add to a special list or something like that, but it's possible to do, to Chris to make it happen. And in preparation for the event, uh, Mark or Austin, you guys want to talk about the meetings we had last or earlier this week about the interop event? I think Mark should take that one. As I scrambled to find my unmute. Yes, uh, we had we had an uh, interoperability uh, conference call earlier in the week, and I think it was very productive. We have minutes that are below the current uh, minutes being edited, uh, where we discuss some of, some of the go forwards. Uh, Clements and Sarah are looking at how they can provide some APIs to provide events from. With Microsoft and Google, uh, and that would be very useful for interoperability. And we're looking for other uh, vendors such as VMware, Huawei, etc., to have their tooling in place as well. I know Austin wasn't able to make the call, but I know that he is working on things aligned with this as well. We have, and we also have a Another meeting coming up on Monday, April 16th, this Monday, at 7 a.m. Pacific, using this same uh, Zoom meeting. Hey, Mark. Yes. This is Rob Dolan, uh, now from Oracle. Yes. I want to suggest that uh, you guys may want to make sure that uh, Oracle is part of that conversation. And if you need help with contacts, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'll, yes. Sorry. Uh, so, so, sorry. Sorry. I. I I should have mentioned that Chad was on the call as well. Right. Oh, perfect. Then you guys are already in touch. Great. Yeah. yeah there, so I didn't mean to exclude anyone uh, in the in the comments I made, uh, but there there was a um, attendee list down below that uh, you can take a look at. I think somebody from Oracle was on the call. Yeah, yep. Chad. Okay. And, the, uh, and I think all of those all of those calls are you know whoever shows up shows up. Yes. It's open right. to everyone. Yep. Any uh, questions or comments on the uh, on the interrupt stuff? So I also just wanted to clarify. Um, we are aligning on you know some example formats that we're going to try to have a couple of different providers say like you know file like image upload is this you know object created, you know, format that um, I haven't proposed yet, but I was going to um, sort of align what Google does and what Microsoft does and um, propose something 
and then um, the actual setup of how the source and destiny or the purpose whatever we're calling it, the, the producer and consumer are connected, where it like is outside of the scope of the demo, we'll, that might require some things that are different um, or it will require some things that are different. We're not gonna try to align on that, right? If people wanna hook these things up, they're gonna have to do things that are specific to the different people doing the demo. And we're just gonna you know, do twosies if needed to get the demo. But the main thing is to show, look, we're all using the same format and that's a huge step forward. And that there are some, you know, combinations of providers that um, work together. That sounds great, Sarah. All right, any other questions or comments on that? All right, so just a reminder, next Monday, 7 a.m. Pacific is the next phone call for that. All right, so let's talk about PRs. First one, now this one it was technically open last night, but only because it's a duplicate of one that Austin could not quite get the DCO signed on, so we just created a new issue for it, or a new PR for it. So Austin, you wanna quickly talk to this one? Yes, this is a pretty simple update to our roadmap, specifically the 0 0.1 milestone, which is what we want to announce at Cloud Native Con. Um, this adds in a few things that Clemens has been working on, um, specifically including kind of a spec for mapping the cloud events to HTTP, as well as some spec that shows how to, how to format cloud events as JSON, um, and also defining a type system for cloud events values. Uh, so those are a few things that are in progress, but just wanted to make them clear on the roadmap. So I would, what I would like is to have a label on the core spec first. And then, so, so I, what I, I would really prefer if we would go and, and um, get to a very quick resolution, um, preferably, preferably, preferably even today, but uh, you know, likely next week, we're gonna say, hey, we're gonna tag the core spec with 0.1 that we have a baseline um, because I think the, the um, I'm pretty comfortable obviously with the HTTP and the JSON status, but um, I don't think that it has seen a lot of review. And um, so I would prefer us doing um, a, basically locking down the 0 0.1 for the core spec. I mean, from, from there on, we're gonna do 0 0.2, et cetera, but basically put a tag on it, put a label on it, and then, um, do the HTTP and JSON mapping subsequently because we're going to do some interop work, and that interop work will uh, shape these initial drafts. And uh, so I would pro rather want to have those in the 0 0.2 um, phase, I would say, and focus on 0 0.1 kind of the core spec, um, you know, locking that first. So, so Clement, just to be clear. I think what you're also suggesting there is what we actually take to KubeCon would actually probably be closer to 0 0.2 instead of 0 0.1. Is that correct? Yes, but but I want I want to. So I, I'm interested in having a a tag in the repo um, that says 0 0.1, so that you can go in and point to a spec that isn't changing, but you say this is 0 0.1. That's what I rely on for my stuff. And then, I love and then that can, idea. Huh? I love that idea. Yeah. So we do have the protocol specification in 0 0.2, so we could be like, I support the 0 0.1 attributes. And then we have something that is stable, even if we know it's going to change. Exactly. So that's my point. My point is I, to do the transport mappings, I need to have a stable reference point and not something that, that kind of that moves around. And, and eventually they will all snap into one, under, one, under one roof. But um, I think I want to I want to have the core spec walk, and then we're, the core spec will move slower, hopefully, um, than um, all the other stuff that we do for the for the real wiring off. So Clemens, on this list of what Austin has shown here, of these four things he put in there, is I assume you want the middle two to be moved to two to zero point two. Yes. Right? And what about the first and fourth? Do they stay the, or do they move as well? The first and the first and fourth I would I would keep. Okay. Because awesome. the cloud events values type system is something that we have implicitly right now, kind of in a, in a, in a wishy-washy way. And so the PR that we also have on the list is it's just a clarification of that. Right. Austin, what are your thoughts on that? Sounds good to me. My interest was in making the deliverables explicit. 
Uh, so they're all kind of working towards getting these things done. I love the idea of tagging the initial spec as 0 0.1 and moving these to 0 0.2. So I'll move the second and third to the 0 0.2 and keep the first and fourth, fourth in 0 0.1. Okay, so hold on just a sec. Is there anybody on the phone who objects to heading that direction? I don't object, but I will mention that I think this conflicts with Rachel's uh, renumbering. Yeah. It does. That's okay. Like I can, I can renumber them. And honestly, the point of renumbering is to make us, it was like to encourage us to stick to our roadmap and this is us sticking to our roadmap. So. Yeah. And I think that, um, yeah, so this isn't Austin's roadmap. This is our working group's roadmap. I, I think Austin did a great job of driving it. Um, and so I think we're actually following. Yeah. I, I, I'm just commenting that I think Austin and Rachel could get together and have a combined PR that, would you trust oh, yeah. that? And I can, I, I will redo mine after this, if this gets accepted. And so just ready to, can we just accept Rachel's now? No, because there's a formatting problem. But I mean, we can accept it based on, like, we could accept it and say that the formatting is administrative and doesn't need a working group if we wanted to. And then that might streamline this process. So let, 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 let's, let's focus on, on this issue right here. So I want to be clear. So everybody's agreeing to moving points two and three uh, of the current PR to 0 0.2 milestone. Um, yes. And we're going to try our best to try to tag 0 0.1 as soon as possible once the stated milestones for 0 0.1 are in place, which at least for as I now include the, the two extra items, points one and four. So um, I'm sorry, I missed the last week's meet. I didn't, what, haven't been tracking the website. Is that done? In 0 0.1, or should we move the last two items to 0 0.2 as well? Create and deploy a website that features a simple overview, email list, and direct visitors to get help. Is that not already completed? I don't know. I'm, I'm Close. Just, uh, Dan, Dan actually provisioned the website. Uh, it's up and running. I, I'm not sure if it meets all that criteria yet, but I don't, I don't really have a strong preference as to where we, well, let's, so let's I, move I, it to zero dot. I would say leave it in zero dot one for now and hopefully we can achieve it. Okay. Oh yeah, because we're not at you're not one quite yet, right? Right. So Dan okay. has a, a couple of days to get it done. <laughs> or we can move it later. Yeah. All right. So is that the agreement? Yeah. Yes. All right. Cool. Um, I haven't else? seen I haven't seen Rachel's PR. I'm not sure what it contains, but if there's anything we could do to merge them or just move faster on that. Uh, it is bullet points to be enumerated to have like numbers, not letters, or something. I'm going to move hers up because I think we're proposing that it is ready and that the formatting could potentially be outside of, like, independent of this decision. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else on this PR? So, Austin, you have some AI to, to do some twiddling, right? Yep. Okay, cool. Thank you much. Um, this one. We briefly talked about last week. Everybody was supposed to go looking through. This is about removing the additional topics and questions section from the spec, which are basically a list of to dos. Um, if there's anything missing from the list, people were supposed to open up an issue or PR or something. I don't believe anybody did. So, is there any objection to removing this section from the spec? Since I think we already have it covered in issues or someplace else. I'm not going to object to moving it, but basically, I didn't open issues because I think that the current way we're managing issues is really hard to parse. But we can just always dig this up later if we need to refer to it. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Any objections to approving the PR? All right, cool. Next one, camel casing are property names. Um, fairly easy, it camel cases things. Can we cross out the action item about I believe that probably does. You're correct. If we assume we accept this, yes. Yes. Yeah. I. I. Um, I talked to Doug about this. I, like this came out of my my HTTP, actually out of the JSON mapping, um, because I would have to have. So I I wrote I wrote a rule for how to go and do the mapping to JSON, and I found that a little um, weird. Um, so um, I and. This this it gets it just gets difficult in all kinds of language bindings if you have the the dash in there so um, it's easier to go and just make the naming convention different rather than doing special mapping for all kinds of different languages. Yeah, I think we all. 
at least from my perspective, like I'm not, I'm a little agnostic on exactly what it is, whether it's camel case or underbars or whatever, but, um, but we certainly haven't had consistency there. So appreciate. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I went back but with camel case for um, the, what I find the majority of, uh, of easy, uh, you know, close by language bindings, Java and, uh, and uh, Node.js, et cetera, and Go and, um, and C sharp for C sharp would probably want to have, have it different, but um, 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 I'm being ahead of ahead of myself, and I'm bowing to the majority. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, Clemens, yeah. this is uh, Stan. I have a question. Um, would, I'm just generally for the group, I guess. Uh, in some of these things, we see uh, event prepended. Um, what are your feelings on removing event, just having like type versus event type? Um, mm. That seems like beyond the scope of this PR to me. It does. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. It's just a point. Like I think same for ID, right? Like every one of these is an event ID. I think event is a little bit like yeah. Yeah. yeah I think there are some things like version, right? Like some things require prepending. So I think if you have specific examples of ones where you're like it's clear without the event prefix, we could look at those independently as separate PRs. Yeah. I have to think about it in the context of the other um, attributes in order to say for sure. All right, fair enough. I can open a separate th uh, issue or PR. Yeah, do that. I'm. I'm. I think either the way is 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 fine if we keep if we remove or if we eliminate any potential for um, confusion. Like so, we could keep we could keep cloud events version as it is, and then just make version for the event per se or type version um, for the event per se. Not necessarily opposed to it. Let's 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 look at it. Yeah, but yeah, separate issue. You, you need to think through how some of them would, would flow as you're talking about them. If you take event time, if you just change that to time, I don't know that it has as much meaning as it should. You might have to say that it's a date stamp then, and I don't know if you're buying yourself anything. But I think I, it, you have to do it on a one by one basis. I agree. All right, we don't need to discuss that right here. He's gonna open up a separate issue or PR for that, so we can talk about that then. So back to this PR, is there any other questions on it? Is there any objection to approving it? Okay, hold on, I lost myself in my notes. Here we go. All right, no objection heard. All right, Clemens, would you like to talk about your HTTP transport and JSON mapping PR? So well, hmm. um, since since we just pushed that out into zero point two, um, I would probably not want to. Um, okay. And I, I think I want would want the interop group. Um, so that subgroup of p folks who show up for the interop meetings to take a good deep look at it and see how realistic they think this is for implementation. I think I made a. a um, an okay effort to um, not invent anything new, but rather lean on um, the existing uh, artifacts that we have in HTTP um, and uh, and in JSON, and uh, you know do do just a more or less a straight mapping. Um, what one thing I would I should add as a kind of a reading guide a guide is that there are two related um, PRs. One is this one, so HTTP transport and JSON mapping, and then there's another one, which is the HTTP webhook specification. Um, so, and let me give a quick reasoning for those, because to eliminate any, any uh, um, uh, confusion. Um, what I'm doing with the HTTP transport mapping is I'm mapping a cloud event onto the HTTP message per se. So this works for a uh, request as well as for as for a response because I anticipate that people will go and want to build systems where you can go and solicit a a, um, a cloud event from another system, which means you can do a get to pick it up um, on um, what, so an event has been has been delivered to someone like a, a an HTTP based queue and you want to go and pick the, pick up that event. That event should then also map to the HTTP message in clear way as a response. So. What I'm doing in the in the main PR that you you've just been referencing earlier, um, that is that message mapping. Like, how does that generally work? This one here is a gen is it effectively a formalization of webhooks per se. This will work for cloud events, which means it composes with the the transport mapping that I'm, that I'm proposing. But this also works 
um, for the generic case. What I'm, so like if you have a current format that you are delivering events on and you're pushing that out to a webhook, like for instance, GitHub does here, right? There is currently no good formalization of how that ought to work. Like everybody does it in their own way. And so what I'm trying to capture with this spec is um, a common way of how to do this, which operates on, again, on, on, on common HTTP mechanisms. One thing I'm adding here, and that's something that I'm lifting in a way, like conceptually from W uh, uh, plus origin resource sharing, is a um, abuse um, um, protection that um, you probably will need to read through to, uh, to, to grasp. But the point of it is that if you have a system that pushes to a third party website, that it's actually fairly easy to go and take that system and make that a distributed denial of service machine. If you're just registering, registering someone else's website. Um, and so um, this here is effectively protecting in a way that um, the, the target website or the target web service must um, expect those pushes to happen. And that's uh, what I'm adding in here. So this is a, this is something that I would um, propose that we eventually take to IETF um, because it's a generic mechanism that's not strictly tied to cloud events, but that is um, a, a interoperability foundation for what we do for, for cloud events. So I'd like, I'd like to not have a discussion right now about this one. And I like the introduction, so thank you very much, but I don't want to have a deep dive yes. discussion. Since no, this I don't want to talk about either. Here. Right. So, Let's move on to the next one, which actually is targeted for 0 0.1, which is your type system one. So maybe we could talk about that one instead. Yeah. Okay. I'll let, I'll make it to the spot. Hey, let me hide the comments. Okay. Go ahead. I'll, I'll scroll through it before you. Um, so this one is, uh, was motivated by my, by the, the JSON type mapping because I need to have a way to map types um, and uh, defines the types that we're using right now. Um, we have a string. Uh, we have a binary, we have a map, um, we have, so these are all lifted from the, 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 the attribute section. Um, we have um, an object, the object is something that I'm introducing here because we have for the data section, we have a arbitrary content, I think what it said. Um, so I'm just making this an, an object and that's an effectively a variant type, which can be either a string or a binary or a map. Um, then URI becomes a, its own type. We are actually using that already as its own type, and I'm just clarifying that it is a string, a string expression um, as defined in RC 3986. And then timestamp is also, um, we are using that already, and so I'm just lifting that up and say, say it's a string expression as defined in RFC 3339. Um, I'm clarifying that we're not defining numerical or logical types here, um, even though we, would be, we could be tempted to, um, I think it's fine to not have them unless we have a really hard need for them. Um, and so then I have the, and I'm basically making the clarification down to the object type. So it, I'm not inventing anything. I'm just basically just clarifying what we're using already. Okay, any questions on the second before we move forward? And then I guess the rest is just conversion of, uh, Almost looks like there's back ticks around everything for the most part, right? Yeah, and then and then and then taking the the redundancy out of the timestamp, redundancy out of the URI. Um, in the content type, I, I I keep it because it's a string, but the string needs to uh, conform to um, RFC 20, 2046. It's arguable that this might, you know, might should could um, be um, its own type. I just find that a little strange, if it were. Um, because it's really a string, and then and then I have map, an object. All right. Any questions or comments? I think the best. I'm just trying to show this. Go ahead. Sorry, was there a question in there? Yeah. I uh, apologize for not reviewing this in advance. I just added a comment. Um, I think object is a problematic term because of its very specific meaning in JavaScript. And I'd kind of prefer if something was left like untyped rather than introducing a term that can create confusion. Yeah, well, so, so I'm, I've been using this, this came out of the JSON mapping, which means this comes out of the lingo for of JavaScript, um, where I'm, I'm um, 
so I'm I'm using the the variant nature effectively of of uh, of JavaScript here in a sense. So object is is really meant to be a variant type. I so understand exactly, that. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, All right. In common parlance, object is a, a hash, is a map, right? Like objects in JavaScript have properties. They aren't exactly what is defined here. I understand the need for a definition. And so in general, I think that this is a great direction for the PR, but I think exactly it, it's, um, I think that it would be great to have more review on it um, before finalizing it. And, you know, where this is sort of a, point to anyhow. So I think leaving it open for a little more time for comment, maybe somebody has a better name or construct for this. Um, well, so what is, what, what's the concrete objection? Object. So, yeah, um, I, one of my concerns, and I, I apologize, I didn't click submit, it seems in my comments. Uh, I know I'm going to run into problems with a PR that's already out with map being explicitly defined as a map of from key to effectively anything. Um, because for example, labels was specifically a map that's only a key value pair. Uh, the mm -hmm. values must all be strings. So I don't know, uh, I mean, this can be a follow up if necessary, but uh, it would be nice to be able to, to give a narrower type of the map. Well, it's if it's if the values are objects uh, are objects, then they can also be strings. You can go and constrain that in your PR. It, it's it's like we do this we do this here. We have a string, and then we go for content type. We go constrain content type down to um, a particular format. So I think what I heard <clears throat> was Sarah was asking for a little bit more time for review. Um, Clemens, would you be okay with that? Yeah, um, if we don't get consensus on merging it, then obviously we have to give time for review. It's, uh, um, I would just ha have to have that merge next week because we need to have a type system. Okay. So. It, would it, is, is the group okay then with the, with, um, it sounds like everybody's okay with the general direction. It's just there may be one or two questions about, about in particular, so, map and object. Yeah. So let me try something. Let me try something. Okay. If I call the object variant, would be, you'll be happy? Variants? That's interesting. Can we, uh, can we think about that? So yeah, why don't we just give it a little time? I don't think we're changing the actual, this is a, semantic representation about something we all agree on. So it shouldn't actually change any implementation. And having a little more time for people to name things, like come up, brainstorm good names for things so this doesn't add confusion, which could potentially slow down everything, you know, I think would be good. But we will, we'll respond to this soon. Right, so, so what if we do this? What do we, we have, the assumption going forward is people are okay with the general direction, so just some minor changes in particular on map and object, people may want to suggest alternatives. Right. How about we, we push to get those alternatives proposed by say like Tuesday with the assumption that Clemens will be able to finalize it Tuesday evening, Wednesday kind of thing, and then we'll, we'll vote next Thursday. Correct. Does that sound fair to everybody? Yeah, we should vote next Thursday on that. That's the key issue, yes, voting next Thursday. Any That's objection? Anybody object to heading down that path? Austin, were you going to say something? <laughs> I was just going to clarify that this is a 0 0.1 uh, agenda item. Yes, actually, yes. since you mentioned that, let me, do, let me make it more official. Ooh. Austin. Well, this is a clarif okay, so this is a clarification of what is currently in the spec, right? Yeah, this exactly is a norm, change this is a, any definitions in the spec. So this is a normative. This is a normative part of the specification that I'm referencing, in in the HD, in the binding. So I need to have. I I really need to have that. So let me back up though. I, is there any objection? Because I thought we already agreed to this, but let's just double check. Is there any objection to this PR being part of zero point one milestone? I, if we can have another like few days to just make it more clear in my opinion and propose some alternate wording. I don't have an objection to yeah, that. Yeah, that, 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 that put, agreeing to putting the milestone does not change the agreement we had before, which is we're not gonna yeah, vote until next Thursday. Yes, that seems fine. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Okay. So, 
So, so with that, what, what do we have left for 0 0.1 in the core spec then? Can, I think we have some additional PRs to go through, right? Yeah, well, I'm just, I'm just if for, for the vote, since they're doing a vote on this one next Thursday, I'm, um, I'm just wondering where we are you're, then. You're looking to the, the, can, the very yeah, next, it's an the very next thing on the agenda is also 0.1. Let's talk um, so I I have a change that I did not push because it's um, that I can immediately push if we want to take the uh, feedback that's open there. Uh, this one. Yep. So okay. I can push that exact wording if you'd like. Um, oh. I just want to make sure I did it clearly with everyone's consent here instead of just trying to slip it under the radar. Yeah. Why, why don't you talk about the PR in general in case people haven't had a chance to fully digest it, and then you could talk about the specific change you, that you're thinking about making. Sure. Yep. So uh, basically, uh, as I've drilled in a number of times, uh, a document create event means very different things, whether it is, you know, a Microsoft Word document create or a Mongo document create. Um, and so for systems that might want to aggregate uh, or group by event type, it would dramatically help people to be able to actually have a semantic namespace. Um, similarly, uh, you might have software that wants to be in compatibility mode with another software. Um, and so being able to say that I'm subscribing in cloud storage with, using the Amazon semantics, I might want to say AWS object create. Um, and so that was the intent is to say that uh, we recommend you, there's a should uh, suggestion that it should be uh, using a reverse DNS style namespace. I chose reverse DNS because it tends to group things hierarchically uh, very well for listing. Um, and just as a, an FYI, uh, both Microsoft and Google own the Microsoft and Google TLDs respectively. So um, we kind of benefit from being backwards compatible already with what we do. Um, just want to make sure that that's clear so no one thinks that we're being sneaky. And then the change that you're proposing is, I believe this, right? Yeah, so uh, Doug had brought up a very good point that I'm that, um, trying to be very clear about the software compatibility mode that, um, Basically, it, we're not saying it's disallowed that somebody else implements another software vendor's contract, um, it, but that com.github, uh, they own the right to define what these event types mean. So if Google Cloud Storage ever implemented Amazon's namespace stuff and there was incompatibility, it's a bug with Google, not with Amazon. And for me, the key was talks about the semantic of the event as opposed to the source of the event. Yeah. <laughs> Clement, are you trying to talk there? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm wondering. Um, so, I, I, as as um, an organization that defines a lot of these things, I'm okay with all the dicta with with being the dictator of them, um, but. Uh, I'm one. I'm wondering in how far that is an enforceable clause. <laughs> you know, which part of it? The, the the prefix domain dictates the organization. Uh, dictates the organization which defines the semantics of this event type. Like that's a. Well, I mean, anybody can make up. I think the key thing is that. People can diverge from the spec, like anybody can write any code they want, right? But we need to define a specification that allows for it to be clear what the heck this thing is. And um, by not having any scoping of the namespacing of an event, that's not clear. Anybody can make up a domain and scope it themselves, right? Yeah. I don't understand the concern really. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm, so I'm wondering whether this is the, is the path towards the, the giant UDDI event registry, um, but I'm I'm like I'm I have to I don't have any substantial objections to it, but I'm I'm feeling this is a little, it's a little very it's a little too dictatorial. Thank you for the blast from past though. I appreciate that mentioning UDDI. That was pretty good. I'm right. sneaky that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Rachel. Were you going to say something? Yeah, I'm wondering, like Clemens, what can we like? What would what would make you feel better about Well, this maybe change? since he's not actually objecting, maybe we could hear from other members of the working group to see how other people feel. Okay. 
Anybody else have any comments on this or any part of the PR? Can someone hook me up with a great person to get a, a custom top level domain? <laughs> it doesn't have to be a top level domain. Yeah. Oh, you just want a cool top level domain like the big companies do. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. If we go with event types in this manner, then um, it looks great to have Microsoft dot or whatever, or Google dot, or even Amazon has, has dot AWS. Oh, and then other people have to be com dot blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't even realize that was a thing until just actually earlier today, someone else came across it. They were giving a list of, of uh, DNS names and I know. Yeah, I didn't know. Dot Cis- there was dot Cisco, dot Microsoft, dot IBM. I didn't realize that. That's pretty cool. It's cool for sure. IBM or Cisco. Or <laughs> yeah, I think it's for that, yeah. Those things are super expensive. So uh, it's, um, uh, it's good for us in ter- uh, from all the big companies, but then, you know, uh, for all the small co- companies, um, it's, it's, uh, um, you, it, we're basically forcing them, this, this will force them into um, something that's aligned necessarily with their domain name um, as a should clause. So that's also why I'm a little hesitant because I know how little well, company the world is. When I was a little company, I really appreciated being able to make up my own namespace, even if it was net.blazingcloud.whatever, right? Like it was, it, it's, it, this is like a very, like only exposed to developers thing. Yeah, I understand. So I'm, as I said, I'm a little, I'm okay with it. Okay. So let's, let's run with that. Okay. <laughs> Is there any then objection to taking the PR with this change and moving forward with it? Okay. So Thomas, you can make that change. I will push it right now. Thank you. Okay. So, um, oops. Approved with the suggested edit. All right. So I, I apologize. I should have done this before, but this has been a really busy week for me. I haven't gone through the list of PRs to, note, to remember which ones are actually tagged with 0.1. I think we actually may have hit them all. I'm not 100% sure, but I suspect Rachel's might be the next one that would come closest to it if it's not officially tagged with 1.0. I'm sorry, and 0.1. Mine has, mine has changes that need to be made for formatting. And after Austin uh, pushes, or like after that PR merges, I will. Well, I think actually, what I would propose is that we accept the what it, you know we accept what it is, and then we allow for the formatting changes to happen independent of the working group meeting. Then Rachel could fix it up today, and and then Austin could immediately follow with his. Right. That that was that's what I was going to suggest. Basically, it's relatively straightforward PR. Does anybody object to removing or replacing the the bullets with basically just numbered lists? Is the point? Is that right, Rachel? That's basically. That's right. The idea is we can talk about what we are missing without, like, and have numbers for them. Yeah, strictly a syntactical thing. My and only possibly. comment there, my only comment there, had been, as long as it's not implying an ordering, in terms yeah. of what what needs to get done before another. That's a fair point. Is that something we need to say up top? Like, I had a sentence that says the numerical ordering here does not imply. Uh, Priority or anything like that? Uh, yeah, it could be nor- n- numerical ordering like within the um, milestones. Is every, is, Rachel, would you, would you be or, okay with or, adding something like that? Numbering is intended to be for section headers. For section oh, reference in what, if I, what if I make the uh, what if I make the numbers into letters and we can say like alphabetical ordering is not. Oh yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, okay. that's a good idea. Okay. Is there any point oh one a, and then if we ended up having a point oh one one, then it doesn't change things. Yeah. Nice. Okay. All right. I don't think that's that dramatically changes the PR strictly syntactical thing. So it's okay to get that in the last minute. Is there any objection then to this direction? Can we do that to the main spec too? Uh, do what to the main spec? The the uh, header section header section numbering. Like in the spec, we should stop using bullets. Yeah, well, in the main in the main spec, we have uh, headers, but they are um, like we're see we're relying on magic um, usage scenarios, etc. And it would be really good if the over if our if our top level sections um, had numbers in them because that make that makes them easier to to refer to from yeah. other specs. 
Yeah, that sounds good. I don't really like it's kind of a boring PR to write. Uh, but I'm you're sorry. Gonna... <laughs> if somebody wants to you know, add numbering to clarify the spec, I think. Yeah, so I, I think I, I think I heard a volunteer, Clemens. Hey, I'm I'm I have what five specs in flight. Yeah, but right, there was... so I think that like if somebody feels motivated to do the PR, then it <laughs> sounds good. Exactly. If somebody has time, then that's okay too. But yes. yes, I agree with like I am aligned, and uh, if you don't do it, then eventually I will have time. And okay, great. All right, so back to this PR. No uh, Any objection to the stated direction? So just to be clear, uh, uh, Rachel, I believe you're going to instead of using numbers, you're going to use letters, and then you're going to add a sentence and making sure that the new, the ordering of the letters does not imply priority or something like that, right? Yep. Okay. Any objection to that stated direction? Approved. All right, Rachel, 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 Rachel. Okay. Should should we also pre-approve just being able to merge the renumbering of the main spec? Um, probably, but let's wait until we see the PR, just to make sure that everybody agrees that it's strictly syntactical and nothing else jumps out at us. I, I don't want to pre-approve something before I see it. And to clarify on my end, I'm just going to wait for this to get merged in and then refactor my PR real quick. Okay, I'll do it today so you can do that. All right, thanks, Rachel. Uh, da -da -da. All right, cool. Um, uh, in terms of other PRs that I think are ready to go, well, these are clearly not 0 0.1. Are there any other PRs that people can think of that are either 0 0.1 or 0 0.2? Clement, what about this one? A, I don't think it's a PR, but there is the issue around cloud space events versus cloud events without the space. Oh, that major one. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Thank you. Let me get to that one so you can see it. Da -da -da -da. Where is that? Oh, there it is. First one. So we are a little inconsistent in the spec right now. Sometimes we say cloud events as one word, and other times we say cloud events with a space between the two. Uh, I was just saying we need to pick what we should pick one and stick with it. And I believe Chris said we basically are um, trademarking cloud events without a space. And I think Sarah and who else here? Mark both said plus one to that. Is there any objection to heading in that direction? If not, I can create a PR for that and let it sit for a couple of days to make sure no one objects to it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm for it because it turns out to be very clunky in the companion specs to always have it two words. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, so yeah, basically I would propose that since we uh, ages ago decided to trademark cloud events with no space, that if Doug finds instances of cloud space events that we authorize him to just go ahead and fix them. Yeah. Just let you know, there's a very good chance that when this PR comes through, it will include a tool that will check for this. I like those tools. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Any objections to heading down this direction? And as, and with basically approving it, I great. Okay. Again, I don't like necessarily approving PRs before we have them. So I will create a PR. Or I'm sorry. If we agree to what I'm about to say, what I'm going to do is create a PR. It will sit there for for a couple of days to make sure everybody's okay with it, and I didn't do anything really stupid. But it's not going to wait until next Thursday before it gets approved, it's, since it is- Yeah, maybe just technical. wait for any LGTM so that you have a proofreader. Exactly, yes. I would definitely at least wait for at least one, yes. I do that with most things, I try anyway. Yeah. Okay, any objection to that? Okay. Um, okay, I'll finish that later. All right, any other issues or PRs for zero 01 or zero 02? that people can think of offhand. Um, Thomas, I know this is too new to probably approve today, but I was wondering, could we, should, would it be useful to talk about this PR of yours today? Sure, I, I can speak to it. Is anybody okay with that? Has no one else spoke up with the proposal for something to talk about? Okay, because I'd like to, if nothing else, I'd like to get a sense of people's general direction and then maybe vote on it next week. Mm -hmm. Or I say people are okay with the general direction, I should say. Sorry. Go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, this is just, um, you know, URI is a very broad spec. There's a, a lot of strings that can be considered URIs. Um, and for 
purposes that are unfortunately, I think, uh, more clear in future milestones where we might want to set up the relationship between software to say software A should, uh, software, events from software A should be sent to software B. Uh, it's very helpful to actually have a, an authority component, not just a uh, path component to the URI. And because I, you know, I, I decided to let's just call it a should, not a must, um, to avoid some controversy there. But all in all, I didn't expect it to be a very controversial. To be clear, the authority is the HTTPS. Uh, no, no. So HTTPS is protocol. Uh, you can, yeah, you can put authority or uh, the protocol or scheme with the authority, but you don't have to. Oh, it's a domain. Okay. So I made a comment on this one um, with a reference to um, the actual URI spec. Um, in the URI spec, there's an, as I say, an extensive discussion um, about the fact that URIs are not necessarily system assets, which means they're not necessarily network addresses. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, can, I can tell you that in our case, in our usage scenarios of how we're going to use cloud events, they will practically never be network addresses. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way that we could maybe scope this and say, like, if you were using it for case X, then you should do Y? Well, the URI, I think the URI specification is pretty extensive and, and covers, covers many cases that you might be interested in. But um, there is a very clear definition of what an absolute URI is and what that looks like. Sure. Clemens, are you there? Can anybody hear me? I can hear you. We can hear you. Uh, did it sound like Clemens got cut off there? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, okay, <laughs> I thought it was just me. Yeah, I, I just, I, oh, I don't know how I got mooted. So um, the, the, URI, the URI specification is pretty clear about absolute and relative URIs. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they're both permiss permissible here. And then there's a bunch of URI ty types which are interesting here, including URNs, which simply do not have um, authority names. So there's I think you're looking at this as a URL and not as a URI. And you can, for your implementation, look at it as a URL, but I don't think we will, like from a Microsoft perspective, we will not, we will look at these as URIs and not URLs. Interesting. So, um, and mind you, I might be getting all the nuances wrong. Like I specifically don't intend to, with the events we send, include a scheme. So I don't consider them to be URLs either. Um, but it is useful to understand that, um, you know, once again, that the, the document is from, uh, you know, firestart.googleapis.com, not uh, docs.googleapis.com. Yeah, but I, um, I'm not sure you can actually use the authority without having a scheme in front of it. Oh, absolutely, you can. That's no. I don't, th I don't think um, that's not my reading of your right because the scheme that you can use an authority in the context of the scheme, but you can't make a relative, a relative URI uh, reference without a scheme um, is doesn't include an authority component. You can, you can probably go and make one, but that is then not an authority, but that's your first part. That's the first uh, segment of your, your, of your, your relative URI. Yeah, you, you always need a URI pre. You always need a URI prefix, and perhaps even a, have an alias for that as well. That's yes. the nation thing. Yeah, that, you absolutely have to have that. So, so EVF scheme authority, and then you have a a, a path, a, which means the uh, the 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 URI reference, the relative URI reference, or you just have a relative URI reference, but you can't pick and choose from the from the front pieces. So this means that if one wants to specify the authority component, one must specify the protocol. In well, the well, well, don't, consider, don't consider it a protocol. It's, it's just a URI. I'm sorry, scheme. I, I misspoke. I'm sorry. Prefix, yeah. uh, correct, right? Like, so this works really well for ARN, but maybe not so well for people who um, might be transporting, using different trans like, different ways to refer to things yeah. that need a yeah. 
So my point is the RFC 3986 is a, is a very extensive discussion of all, that, of all those concerns. And it gives you a ton of options for how to deal with absolute things and relative things. So I'm not seeing the benefit of further constraining that in our, in our specification here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, um, it was easier for my, I, I'm newer to Google than Thomas, so I don't necessarily know all the Google things, but um, it was easier when this was sort of broken out into a authority and a path to um, map to um, so. Yeah, so, so in, the no, in a notation where you have a, a, a string that looks like this, um, let's say services.google.com slash foo slash bar, then that is actually a relative URI where the first segment of that is part of your relative URI. Yes, I'm familiar with the URI spec, and I'm sorry I did not catch this nuance in the reading of the cloud event spec. Okay. Um, because we, our... Um, our internal resources can be accessed through multiple URL schemes in multiple ways. And so that um, we'll have to think about how to map that effectively. And we can always parse URLs, but that's not ideal. Because of course, the URI spec is very, very flexible. You can put anything in there and then do string parsing, right? So it's you know, possible, of course. But there's, there's pl there's, there are plenty of libraries that do the right thing and tell you what, whether it's relative or absolute and what the scheme is and all this. So I don't think it's that hard. I wasn't, and as I said, this is not hard. It is just yeah. something that we'd like to be yeah, it, it, it must, to with a bunch of different ways that different providers can do it. And we're not going to block it if it's inconvenient for Google, particularly, right? We can write code here too, and we can use libraries too. Um, we just, I think, you know, I think we should hold on this PR and we should give it some thought about how it works in different scenarios. Well, it typically what we found its best practice is to keep events minimized. And so when you're, when you're identifying an event or a source or any part of an event, scheme is required. That identifies how to interpret the rest of the string. And the rest of the string, and typically in our cases, will be a, 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 a hash or something, a, a unique identifier, UID. You need nothing else in between. So that minimizes the event in most cases, and that's what we'll produce. Yeah. All right, so I'm not, I'm not hearing, obviously, consensus yet, and we want some time to go back and think about it. So I think it's at least good to have the initial conversation here. I think that clarified some things. We only have, we only have four minutes left, so, and I don't think we have time to really talk about anything other than I would like people to take a look at this list of issues that I think we can now close, or maybe... Mark, once he finishes that stuff on the website, maybe this week, we should be able to close that one. But please take a look at these. And if you, in particular, if you own those um, and you think we can close it, just go ahead and close it on your own. Otherwise, we may talk about those in a future call to see if we can close them. I have a quick question for folks on the call. I added a comment to the, somebody had an um, issue on getting to more of a like normal LGTM process. I just joined a different um, open source project that's using Prow. And so I don't know how to set it up, but it seems pretty neat because you can have owners of particular directories that can then LGTM and approve PRs without being like worldwide access and capabilities. And so if, and so I thought for some of the things like the about, and I've just proposed having like a community directory, we where we have the opportunity now to have subdirectories, right? And we can imagine members of the working group um, being able to accept PRs into those subdirectories and streamline the process, you know, with a little more, you know, like make sure that some has review and like add a little process there. But I wanted to ask if anybody's familiar with Prow. I'm familiar with it from the Kubernetes world because I believe they use it. And uh, I, I can understand they may need that because they have a very large structure with lots of different owners for different sections of the project. I, my initial gut reaction is I don't think our project is big enough to warrant that level of overhead. Okay, so maybe not the tool, but maybe we could think about a, pro a manual process that like mirrors what that tool does, because I think that that might be good. So I, I, yeah, so I'm not familiar with the tool. I don't, maybe it's hard to set up. I don't know. I don't find the process that we have here defective. I, I don't see the, the need to add complexity and extra tooling and process on what we have now. 
Okay, any other comments? Okay, so with that, let me just do the, the quick roll call check. I think the one two people I missed is Chris Borchers. Are you there? Yep, Chris? I'm here. Okay, and Sven? Sven, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Sorry. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. It took me so long to get off mute. Yeah, sure. <laughs> not a problem. Um, we have still a whole minute left, so it's okay. Is there anybody on the call who is not on the agenda or list of attendees? Did you mark Dan Rosnova? I'm just I, sitting here on a... I did not yet. Oh, so, Nova. Gotcha. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Thank you guys very much. It was very productive. So please look over... Which PR was it? Clemens's HTTP transport binding for next week. I think that was the one we said we'd wait on. Oh, no, sorry. Type attribute system for next week. Yes, exactly. But you should also, if you do get a chance, please take a look at the HTTP one because that's probably going to come in fairly soon afterwards. So take a look at those two if you get a chance. And that interrupt meeting is at 7 on Monday. Is that right? Correct. 7 a.m. Pacific time this coming Monday. Thank you. All right. With that. Hi, everybody. Oh, go ahead, Rachel. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, she was saying goodbye. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Great work, everyone. Bye. Right. Thank you.